Hello, people of the internet. Um, my name is Noelle. I'm disabled. I am a service dog handler. Therefore, I have a service dog. Um, he's not going to be part of this little video, but I just wanted to have a quick little chit chat about something that's kind of becoming an epidemic. Um, I've noticed this a lot where there are a lot of pet dogs in stores that aren't pet friendly. And there's also this epidemic of fake service dogs. Um, so I just kind of want to talk about why that is and why that's dangerous and kind of silly. Um, first things first, um, let's just kind of define a service dog, which is by the ADA, which is the American with Disabilities Act. Um, that's a dog or sometimes a miniature horse that is trained to help an individual who is disabled. Um, these animals are trained to help their handler by tasking. Um, and this is something that helps the handler actively with their disability. Um, this isn't emotional support. It's not comfort just by being there. It's something that actively changes something with the handler. Um, so medical alert, behavior interruption, stuff of that nature. Um, so buying a vest off of Amazon and putting it on a dog doesn't make it a service dog registering your dog with a fake registry doesn't make it a service dog. Um, being disabled and just having a dog doesn't make it a service dog. Not being disabled and having a task trained dog doesn't make it a service dog. Um, it's a pretty simple, it's a pretty simple concept. It's pretty black and white. Um, so I don't really understand the confusion with it, but there seems to be this common issue of dogs being in places they shouldn't be. Um, and there's a lot of danger to this, and there's a lot of reasoning and logic on both sides to this, I think. Um, but I just want to put into perspective how this is dangerous for service dogs um, and service dog handlers. With that being said, um, there's a lot of work that goes into service dogs. Um, most of these owners and these programs are putting these dogs through 200 plus hours of training. There's a lot of basic obedience, there's a lot of task training, and there's also just a lot of public access training. Um, and that helps make it so that these dogs can be successful in these different aspects of the public. And they can be as inconspicuous as possible for their handler, but also allow their handler to live a normal life. Um, so this is very different than what a pet dog typically goes through as far as training goes. Commonly, those guys have like, you know, maybe 50 hours of training if they're in a good household, you know, and a lot of the times that's just basic obedience with a lot of tricks and a lot of agility. There's not quite as much preparation to this kind of environment with pet dogs, so they're not nearly as prepared or experienced or really capable for these kind of environments. Um, so that's, that's the biggest thing. And this is a really big factor because service dogs are trained to heal next to their handler. They're trained to defecate and urinate in certain times and places. Um, they're taught to have this general professionalism to them, and that's very different than how a pet dog acts. Um, typically with a service dog, you don't see them pulling on a leash or on a flexi lead or sniffing people or urinating in aisles. They act very different to the way that a pet acts in public. Um, and yes, there are some pets that do have better mannerisms and are more capable of doing stuff like this, but that doesn't mean that they belong in that type of environment. Um, it's just, it's really rude and it's really disrespectful to the service handlers um, and all the time and effort that they've put into these dogs. Um, likewise, it's really dangerous. Um, Kind of like I've mentioned, pet dogs aren't typically prepared for these type of environments. There's a lot of stimulus. There's a lot of noises. There's a lot of smells. There's a lot of machinery with refrigerators and forklifts. There's a lot of activity with different people. There's a lot of noises with baskets and things dropping. And that can be really overwhelming um, for certain dogs, and especially for a dog that's not introduced to that environment properly. Um... It's 
really stressful for dogs sometimes. It's really stressful for a lot of service dogs sometimes. Um, so it's just really inconsiderate to do that to your dog, to take them into this place and overwhelm them like that and just not think anything of it. Um, it's also potentially dangerously dangerous to the public. Um, your flexi lead could trip somebody because your dog isn't near you and you're not paying attention. Um, your dog could lunge at somebody who's coming, you know, from the next aisle because it scares the dog. Um, there's just a lot of unknowns that comes to having pet dogs in public locations like supermarkets and stores and stuff like that. Um, it just, it's really inappropriate. It's really unprofessional. It's just really rude. Um, your pet dog has no public access rights and service dogs go through all of this training to gain these public access rights. And it's not because they're just special or because their owner wants them to. It's because their owner has to. Um, you can go get groceries by yourself and be fine. I can't. I can't go get groceries without my service dog. I could have a medical episode. I could get hurt. I can't live a normal life like that. So it's important to let service dog handlers use their service dogs as a medical tool which allows them to live this independent life and to live somewhat normally. You can go five minutes without being with your dog. I really can't, typically. Um, so just think about that. Um, also think about the fact that, yes, my service dog is trained to ignore people and other dogs and stuff of that nature, but it's still a dog. It's going to make mistakes. Your dog barking or lunging at us could make my service dog miss an alert. And then I could end up in the hospital or worse or something because of a medical event that could have been prevented. Um, so just think about the environment you're in. Think about how your actions are going to influence other individuals. Um, and the next time you think that you want to take your dog to Walmart or Target or something of that nature, don't. Take your dog to PetSmart. Take your dog to Home Depot. Take it to any other pet-friendly store. And let it get that experience and fun that you want it to have. Take your pet there to have that time with it. Don't take it into Walmart and make my life more difficult. Um, service dog handlers have a lot of public access issues. And a lot of it is because of fake service dogs. And a lot of it is because of pets that are just going into stores. So just think about it next time you want to do that. Um, it's really disrespectful to service dog handlers. It's really disrespectful to service dogs who go through all of this work and hard time and knowledge and work so hard to get this. It's really disrespectful to stress your dog out like that. It's really disrespectful to the stores and their employees who are trying to keep their store clean and sanitary. Like it's not, it's just not worth it. It's not beneficial. Um, so think about it. Choose to be kind, choose to think of others, and choose to not endanger the lives of others because you wanted to take your dog into a store. Um, so that's all I really have to say. Thanks.